In this video, I'll introduce you to our new tool that can make any Blender character compatible with the Unreal 4 mannequin. And in the near future, I hope to update it and make it compatible with the Unreal 5 humanoid character as well. I'm really happy with the workflow. You just click a button and load this rig setup. You align it to your character using intuitive controls. Then you bind and export it to Unreal. And it will be compatible with the mannequin skeleton, even if the character has different proportions. There are some things to keep in mind, so please watch the whole video. I'll show you the basic workflow and also advanced techniques, such as attaching additional bones to the main skeleton. If you want to use this tool, it is part of our Game Rig Tools add-on. You can download it from Gumroad. The pricing is pay what you can. It's free if you can't afford it, but otherwise we ask you to pay a fair price. Once you get to the downloads, you should see Game Rig Tools Unreal module. The core module contains the original Game Rig Tools functionality for creating game-ready rigs. You can watch my previous videos about that. These modules do not depend on each other. For example, you can install only the Unreal module, although the core tools contain a lot of useful features. So download this zip file. By the way, the developer behind Game Rig Tools is Blender Boy. He has a lot of useful rigging add-ons on the Blender market, like Bonera or Frame Ranger, so check them out. And let's install the add-on. Here I am in Blender 3.1, and the add-on also works with Blender 3, and it kind of works in Blender 2.93, I'll explain in a second. So to install the add-on, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, click on Install, find the zip file that you downloaded, and activate the add-on, and it will appear in the 3D view side panel Game Rig Tools. You can also change the name of the tab where it appears. So here I have the Unreal module. Above it, I have the Game Rig Tools core functionality. Because I have installed it, if I disable it, I'll only have the Unreal module and it will still work, but I want to enable all of my Game Rig Tools. To start using the mannequin workflow, you just press initiate mannequin and that will load this rig setup. And I'm going to show actual usage examples in a second. Just a quick note about Blender 2.93. I can initiate the mannequin and it will work. However, the widgets will seem to be missing. I may try to fix this in the future, but for now, if you go to armature tab, viewport display and disable the shapes, you'll see this colorful bones and you'll be able to use them to manipulate the skeleton, just the same as with the widgets. Okay, now I'm going to show you a little behind the scenes uh, how this setup works. If you don't care, you can skip this part and just learn how to use the setup. So in Unreal 4, if you create a third-person game template, it comes with the default mannequin. And if you right-click on the skeletal mesh, you can go to Asset Actions, Export and Export an FBX. And if you import that into Blender, you'll see the mannequin meshes, which you can delete, and then you'll be left with an armature that looks something like this. So this is the mannequin's armature. The reason these bones point all over the place is that Blender and Unreal handle bones a little bit differently, especially when it comes to the bone orientations. But these are the bones of the mannequin. So if you could bind your character to these bones, then it will be compatible with the mannequin. The problem is that this is just difficult to work with. It's hard to say which bone does what, and it would be hard to skin the character to these bones. If you import your character with a special FBX settings, automatic bone orientations, then your skeleton will look something like this. And this makes much more sense. Um, you can most likely work with this and skin your character to these bones. However, if you used this skeleton and export it back to Unreal, and try to play mannequin animations with it, you would get something like this. Ouch. So my solution is to constrain the actual Unreal bones to these more intuitive bones. And I even created a tweak armature, which allows me to really quickly change the proportions or the orientation of any of these bones. In this way, I can easily match pretty much any humanoid character with the skeleton 
and make it compatible with the Unreal 4 mannequin. Now let's look at a practical example. I have this character mesh here. Uh, you may recognize it as the zombie from Mixamo, but it isn't rigged, it is just a mesh. And that is what you want in general, just a simple character mesh, no bones, no vertex groups. And then you can go to Game Break Tools, Game Break Tools Unreal Module, Initiate Mannequin, and that will put you right in tweak mode. So here are the main controls. I have one root control, which can move or scale the character. There is the spine control, head and neck control. Here is a widget that moves the clavicle and arm simultaneously. This one moves only the arm and this one only the clavicle. This one rotates the arm and this one the hand. And all of these controls can be moved, rotated or scaled freely. Then on the side you'll see a little UI menu. So these were the main body parts. There are also individual joints that you can tweak. So these you can simply move around any way you like. And then we have special controls for the fingers. So these controls move the individual fingers. And then we also have finger tweaks using which you can move the knuckles. And by the way, if I move one side of the rig, the other will move automatically. That is simply because I have X symmetry enabled. You can enable and disable it from here or from tool X axis mirror. Okay, so if you disable it, you'll be able to move each side individually. And this way you can align the bones to a character that is not symmetrical and that should work uh, within reason. So my usual workflow is to start with the body parts and first scale the root to match the overall size of the character. So the spine looks more or less fine. I'm going to scale it up a little bit. The legs, I can look from front view and let's enable X symmetry. I'll rotate the legs to match the pose of the character. Then I want to move the arms a little bit from the top view, a little bit forward. And then in the front view, I'm going to create this T pose. So the default pose of the mannequin seems to be an A pose and this character is in T pose. And I tested this and it doesn't seem to be a problem. So you can have a character in pretty much any pose, but either T pose or A pose is recommended. Okay, so from the top view, I may want to rotate this arm a little bit and scale it up. And then let's see the um, neck and head. I'm going to move them forward a little bit and scale them down. And from the side view, the spine doesn't look quite right. So I'm going to rotate this widget a little bit and scale it down a little bit, something like this. Now the alignment is starting to look good. So next I can fine tune it using the joint tweaks. The joint tweaks are these spheres that I can just grab and move freely. So from the side view, the ankle seems to be around here, toes, the knee can be a little bit higher. The clavicle and upper arm can be moved separately, but if you want to move them together, just select both tweaks. From this menu, you can hide any of the skeletons. So the unreal one usually gets in the way. So I'm going to hide it for now. So I like the alignment of the big parts. Next, I'm going to focus on the fingers. I'm going to rotate all of these fingers into place, scale them down a little bit. I'm just moving and scaling them until they match the fingers that I see. A technique that I like is to switch the snapping to volume. And now I can either enable the snapping option or keep it disabled. Grab the widget and hold control and that will snap it to the volume of the mesh underneath my cursor. Okay, this is looking good. Next, I could use the finger tweaks for really find uh, alignment. Again, I find using volume snapping very useful. 
just grab a tweak, move it and hold control. And that's the process of aligning the bones. Once you're happy with the bone placement, you can press apply rig. And that finalizes your deformed rig and your unreal rig. If you want to keep tweaking, you can press the tweak button. And the bones will become constrained again. And before moving to the next step, you should be fairly happy with your bone placement and press apply rig. Okay, now I can hide the tweak armature and I'll be working with the deform and unreal armature and my goal will be to bind the character to the unreal armature. So I'll enable X-ray and as I said earlier, binding directly to the unreal armature can be unintuitive and that is why we have the deform armature. So now if I just select the character, shift select the deform armature and press Ctrl P and parent with automatic weights. I'll be able to move this guy with the skeleton. And the next step will be to switch the binding armature to the Unreal one. But before you do this, make sure that the character is skinned correctly, because this armature will be easier to work with for skinning. So for example, the automatic weights didn't quite catch the teeth. I do recommend the voxel heat diffuse skinning add-on. It produces better results generally, but we can fix this. I'll select the deform armature, shift select the character, go to weight paint mode, and then control select this head bone, go to tool, and I can disable front faces and set fall off to project it. This is my workflow for painting through the mesh, I have another video about that. And then symmetry, enable X symmetry and options, enable auto normalize. And now from the side view, I can just paint the whole head and it will move properly with the head bone. I don't want to make this into a weight painting video. I'll assume that everything else is correct. Go to object mode. And now to bind this character mesh to the actual mannequin bones, I'm going to select the character, Alt P and clear the parent, and that will remove the parenting and also remove the armature modifier if it didn't manually remove it, but it will keep the weights. And now with the character selected, I'm going to shift select the root armature, Control P and choose armature deform. So that will bind the mesh to the root armature. And since both rigs have bones with the exact same names, this process is seamless. So now if I select this root armature, which is the Unreal armature, and go to pose mode, and move the bones, they'll be deforming the character. And that's it. This character is now skinned correctly to the mannequin skeleton. And next we can move to export. I'm going to show you two ways, uh, manual FBX and using send to Unreal. There are slight differences, so make sure to check them out. Um, before we do, I'm going to start Unreal. Here is the Epic Games launcher. I'm going to start the latest version of Unreal 4. And as I said, I'm going to cover Unreal 5 soon. So look forward to that. I'm going to create a new games project. Choose third person because it contains the mannequin. I'm going to include starter content name my project and create it. Okay, here is the default third person character project. I can press play and play with the mannequin. So let's see how we can change the character here. So first I'm going to cover the manual FBX export settings. For manual FBX, I want to select the root armature and the character mesh or meshes that I want to export. Go to file, export, FBX, name my character zombie and then for the FBX settings I want the selected objects only transform to default on the geometry you could switch smoothing to face on the armature disable add leaf bones and disable bake animation we don't have any animations if you're going to do this often you can create a new preset 
and export. So then in Unreal, under content, I'm going to create a new folder, my stuff, and inside another folder, zombie. And I'm going to drag and drop the zombie FBX into this folder. For the FBX import settings, keep everything to default except for the skeleton. Under skeleton, click and choose the UE4 mannequin and then import. And that imported the zombie. Even the materials look okay. Uh, often the materials may be messed up and you may have to tweak them manually. So to change the character, all you need to do is uh, go to content. I'm going to show my folders. And so I'm going to go to third person BP blueprints, open the character blueprint and dock it in here. And then select mesh and under skeletal mesh, click here and choose the zombie. Compile and play the game and the zombie will be the playable character. So those are the basics and before I move on to the send to Unreal workflow, really quickly back in Blender, if I select the Unreal armature and go under item, you will notice that the scale is set to 0.01 and that is not a mistake, it is on purpose, it is the same for the deform armature and the same for the tweak one. And again, this is on purpose. And if you're using manual FBX export, please keep these settings. And that will allow the seamless workflow that I just showed you. Okay, now let's look at the Send to Unreal workflow. Send to Unreal is an add-on from Epic Games that allows you to send content from Blender to Unreal. And that is what I personally use and I do recommend it because it solves some of our problems. The add-on can be a little bit difficult to obtain you have to register an Epic account and a GitHub account and link them. And I explained that in a previous video. So, so please watch that if you need help. But I already have the add-on and I'm going to install it quickly. Activate it and it automatically created this um, export folder. So that is something that I changed since the last time I covered the add-on. We used to have at least four different collections meant for Unreal export. Now the add-on has become smarter and it only needs one collection. And so what I need to do is select the zombie mesh and the Unreal armature, press M and move them in the export collection. And what you need to do in Unreal is to enable some plugins. So go to plugins. And here you want to enable the Python editor script plugin and also enable editor scripting utilities. And you'll need to restart Unreal. I'm going to save the files. Okay. Then I can close the plugins window and go to project settings and look for remote execution and make sure that remote execution is enabled. Okay. Now in Blender with the root and zombie in the export collection, I'm going to go to Pipeline, Export, Send to Unreal. You may get a window like this. I'll press Allow Access. So if it doesn't work right away, uh, I found that if I go to Project Settings, Remote Execution and just uncheck and check back the Remote Execution setting, then it's going to work. So now I can go to pipeline export sent to Unreal and it's going to complain that the um, root has unapplied scale. So if you're going to use sent to Unreal, you're going to have to apply the scale. It is nothing complicated. Just select the root armature, press Ctrl A and apply scale. And then I can export and send to Unreal. Now if I go to Unreal, there will be a new folder untitled category, untitled asset, and I'll have the zombie in there. So I'm going to tweak this material just a little bit so that we can distinguish between the sent to Unreal zombie and the manual FBX one. So now I have this bloody zombie. And now if I go to the blueprints and try to assign this new zombie as the skeletal mesh, you may not find the character in the list or uh, in this case it is here and I'm going to select it and notice how the anim class 
was changed to none. So now if I go to the game, you'll see that the character was assigned, but it doesn't play any animations. And that is because Send to Unreal uses the default import settings, which creates a whole new skeleton for the new character. This can be fixed easily in two ways. The first one, just go to your asset, right click on the skeletal mesh, skeleton, assign skeleton, and choose the UE4 mannequin. Accept. And now if I go to the blueprint, the mesh is already assigned. I need to reassign the third person animation blueprint, compile, and I'll be able to play with the zombie. Okay, and the second way to fix this, I'll go back to Blender and from the Unreal Pipeline, Export, Settings Dialog, and under Import, you can tick Launch FBX Import UI. And actually, let me delete the data. Now I'm going to Export, Send to Unreal. And now if I go back to Unreal, I'll see the Import Options dialog. I'll just select the UE4 mannequin from here, Import. Tweak the color. Okay, and now I can apply this character. And it's going to work right away because we assigned the correct skeleton during the import. I'm just going to move the zombie data in a new folder and then we can move on to a more interesting example. So here is our second example, a much more cartoony character. And besides, it has some additional features like a tail, ears, and a mouth that we may want to rig. So I'm going to quickly align my Unreal Mannequin rig. The process will be exactly the same as with the previous character. And then I'll talk about some more interesting techniques like attaching additional bones. Okay, so I've aligned the main bones and something special about this character is that it has a very long neck. And of course I can grab this tweak bone and move it up to make the neck bone as long as the neck. And that will work. So in a second I'm going to add additional bones for the tail and ears and mouth. And I want to emphasize that you can only attach additional bones to the existing ones. You cannot add additional bones in between the existing hierarchy. So for example, it is not okay to split this um, neck bone into two. That won't work. It will make the skeleton incompatible with the mannequin. So now I want to add a couple of additional bones and parent them to the existing ones. And so first I'm going to apply my rig, go to object mode, and I'll hide the tweak armature. So we want to keep the deform armature and the mannequin armature in sync. Here is my workflow for attaching additional bones. In the future, we may add new features to the add-on to automate this process. But for now, what I do is I add a new armature, single bone, go to edit mode. And let's say that this is going to be my tail. And I'm going to place it here at the base of the tail, extrude more bones and name them in Unreal style. Then I'll add one more bone for the mouth and one more for the ear. And symmetrize it. So now in object mode, I can duplicate the whole armature and then with one copy selected, I'm going to shift select the deform armature and press Ctrl J and then I'll select the second copy and shift select the root armature, control J and join them. And now each armature has a copy of these bones. And I need to parent them as well. I'm going to go to edit mode. I'm going to parent the tail to the hips or pelvis with keep offset and mouth and ears. I'm going to parent to the head, keep offset. 
and then I'm going to do the same for the deform armature and that will be much easier to do. Okay, next I'm going to parent the character mesh to the deform armature with automatic weights. You can see that the tail is working. The mouth is also working, uh, although the weights are not good, but in this case, I'm not going to worry about that. For a serious project, obviously you want to make your weights as good as possible. So next, I'm going to switch the armatures, Alt P, clear parent, and then shift select the mannequin armature, Control P, armature deform. Okay, now I want to move this character to Unreal. I'm going to create the export collection, move the character and armature to it, and export to Unreal. I need to apply the scale of this armature and then send to Unreal. Cool, the character was imported. As you know from the previous example, I need to right click skeleton, assign skeleton, and assign the UE4 mannequin skeleton. And it will ask me if I want to add these new bones that I created for this character. And I'm going to press OK. And I don't need this additional skeleton, I'm going to delete it. Now I can go to the blueprints and assign the cartoony character as my playable character. Compile. And now if I try to play, it is going to work, but the character is obviously floating in the air. So this problem already existed with the zombie, but because the zombie was so close to the height of the mannequin, it wasn't apparent. So this is extremely easy to fix. I'm going to go to the character, open the skeletal mesh, and switch to skeleton, and that will show the mannequin. That is because we're using the mannequin skeleton as the skeleton for our new mesh, and the preview mesh is set to the skeleton. So I'll just set it to my new character, and here it is and also I'll set any of the preview animations and right away we'll see the problem of the character floating above the air and to fix this is easy just go to options show retarget options and just switch the pelvis from animation to animation scaled then I'm going to press ctrl shift and s to save everything and now if I play the game my new character is walking on the ground and the animations are looking okay. Now the materials obviously are not correct, but that is okay. It is often the case that materials are not correctly transferred from Blender to Unreal. And by the way, if we look at the skeleton for this character, and let's again switch the preview mesh to our cartoony character. Now if we scroll down, we'll find our tail bones, for example. And these bones can be manipulated. In the teaser video that I made for this technique, I actually made the tail simulated by physics, so that can be a fun topic for a future tutorial. Okay, here is the final example. The process will be more or less the same, but there is something special that I'm going to do with these um, additional arms. And also this character has four fingers rather than five. So I'm going to quickly align the main bones. Okay, here the main bones are aligned and this finger here is the ring finger, so the one between these two. And what I'm going to do for now is just move it to the side so it doesn't affect the weighting when we apply weights uh, a little bit later. And now I'm going to apply the rig, hide the tweak rig. So let's see how we can add bones to these additional arms. Of course we can use the same technique as in the previous example, just add new bones and create a copy of these bones for each armature. And that will work, however, the orientation of these additional bones will be different than the bones of the original arm. So if you want to keep this orientation, here is what you could do. So for the deform armature, I'm going to enable the second layer because it contains some twist bones. And now I'll go to edit mode. And I'm going to carefully select all of the bones that I want to copy. And same on the other side. And then press Shift D, Z, and move the bones down. And you could approach copying the fingers in the same way. That should work, but it will be time consuming. Here I'm going to skip this step. 
go to object mode and from here I can parent the mesh to the deform armature with automatic weights there may be some weight painting issues that I may want to fix but once I'm happy with my weights I'm going to unparent the character and parent it to the root armature armature deform Always check if you have any unused armature modifiers, they may create trouble. Now I can create my export collection. Move the export objects there. I'm going to make sure to launch the FBX import UI and export to Unreal. Of course, I need to apply the scale and send to Unreal. Okay, in Unreal, I'm going to set the skeleton to, to be the mannequin skeleton and import and now in the blueprint I can change the character to be my four arms character compile and I can play with this character now uh, there is this problem that um, the arms are just sticking to the sides we can go to mannequin animations and let's take the run animation change the preview mesh to be the four arms character And now I can grab the second upper arm and lower it a little bit. Same on the other side. And I'm going to add keyframes for both. Now I'm going to apply and save this animation. And if I play, the arms will be pointing down during uh, running. And you can edit the other animations in the same way. Because this character is quite big, you may need to change the position of the camera And that's it, I hope you see how easily you can make any character in Blender be compatible with the mannequin skeleton, even crazy characters like this one. Enjoy and let me know if you experience any problems with this tool, I'm happy to help you. I do hope to update this tool uh, with additional features. One idea is to add a rigify rig to this whole setup, uh, which will control the UE4 bones, so that you can create your own animations compatible with the UE4 mannequin.